Hello there! I'm Christy, and in this video, I'll be recapping our recent trip to Iceland and offering a few helpful travel tips to anyone interested in visiting this land of fire and ice, white walkers, and maybe even Justin Bieber if you're lucky. Our trip consisted of 10 days of exploring the western and southern portions of the country, camping nearly the entire time save two nights in hotels. Contrary to popular itineraries, we did not do the ring road in its entirety. We instead created a route that included some major attractions, as well as a few specific stops off the beaten path that we thought were well worth exploring. Here's a breakdown of our trip. By the way, I'm going to be doing my best at Icelandic pronunciations, so please bear with me. On day one, we landed in Reykjavik, rented a car, drove to Snæfellsnes Peninsula, explored, and camped around Hetlasander. Day two, we explored more of Snæfellsnes Jökull National Park, including Önverðarnesholur lava fields, Arnarstapi and its columnar basalt formations, Landrangur, Ralfelder Canyon and its ice chunks, and ultimately camped in Stikkesholmer. On day three, we took the two-hour, 45-minute ferry from Stikkesholmer to the West Fjords, found a prime lunch spot, and continued on to insane, unpaved, cliff-hanging roads to the bird cliffs of Latrubjarg, the westernmost point in Iceland. FYI, if you plan to explore the more remote areas of the country, such as the West Fjords, be prepared to drive these unfinished roadways littered with potholes. Our Toyota Aura survived, but it was a bit nerve-wracking, to say the least. The goal of all this off-roading? These guys. The 3,000-foot cliffs of Latrabjarg are a birder's paradise, home to literally millions of birds, including puffins, razorbills, northern gannets, guillemots, and other such cliff-dwelling avians. Also, the scenery is quite breathtaking as luscious green fields abruptly end in plunging cliff sides into the Atlantic. After these awesome delights, we backtracked over those same insane roads and camped in Vatnesfjordr Nature Reserve. On day four, we continued exploring the southern west fjords, including Vatnesfjord, their nature reserve, and Reykular, another hotspot for birding, and concluded the day out of the west fjords in Budardalur, where we camped and enjoyed a freezing but awesome sunset at 11 p.m. On day five, we stopped at a volcanic crater, then made our way back to Reykjavik, where we explored the city, slept in a hotel, did laundry, and became human beings again. On day six, we drove to the south coast, where many more tourists were present. We first visited Reynasfjara Black Sand Beach and gawked at the Reynastrangur pillars. Of course, these pillars have a tail attached to them, involving trolls dragging a ship to shore and turning to stone come sunrise, because all bizarre landforms in Iceland deserve their own folktale. After the beach, we hiked around Beek and camped at Beek, which was exceptionally windy, but still cool. Day seven, we continued exploring the south coast, visited Salheimajokjul, a glacier I'd highly recommend visiting as it is easily accessible, not to mention pretty awesome, and full of striking scenery as it sits between the volcanoes Katla and, here we go, Ayafjallajökull, the volcano that erupted back in 2010. This day, we also hiked a portion of the Fimvoduholz trail above the ever-popular Skolfoss. This trail is teeming with waterfalls, dare I say more impressive than Skolfoss. Plus, they're surrounded by the greenest of mosses and the bravest of sheep. After hiking, we ultimately camped around Hetla. Side note, while on the south coast, we avoided such sights as that abandoned airplane you may have seen, as well as one of the popular waterfalls, and instead took our time soaking in, sometimes literally, the sights and hiking farther into the country where most tourists don't venture, which I'd absolutely recommend doing. Opposite to that advice, on day eight, we decided to drive the Golden Circle, which is an extremely popular driving route packed with sights to see. We enjoyed visiting Kedid, another volcanic crater, Geyser and its surrounding geothermal fields, and 105-foot Kusfos, which, while very touristy, were still must-sees in my book. We then camped in Lagovaten, one of my favorite campsites, as it offered a touch of privacy in comparison to most other campsites. On day nine, we completed our tour of the Golden Circle with a visit to Thingvellir National Park, where the original Icelandic parliament used to meet and where the Eurasian and North American tectonic plates are pulling apart. Then we returned to Reykjavik, explored the city a bit more, and slept in a hotel. On day 10, we departed from Keflavik and said bless to Iceland. Now for some tidbits and tips. The best thing about renting a car and camping around this island country is that you can create your itinerary on the fly. Many of the things we did and saw were not exactly planned, but instead based off of weather conditions and how we were feeling each day. 
The other advantage of camping is the money you save in comparison to staying at hotels or Airbnbs every night. Camping for two people was generally 3,000 kroner, or about $30 a night, and included hot showers and sometimes indoor cooking facilities. Campsites, aka Tjelsvedi, do not need to be reserved, nor do you need a camping card as is often advertised. Just simply show up to a campground, find a good spot, and await the campground staff to collect your dues, generally payable by credit card, around 8 or 9 p.m. To add to those savings, we brought approved food with us, you can bring up to 6 pounds from the U.S., including a selection of dehydrated meals and energy bars, mm, which served as our day-to-day -day food. If and when you do eat out, be prepared for the sticker shock of food at restaurants or purchasing any sort of alcoholic beverage from the local Vinbudens. For camping, we brought along a three and a half season tent, along with plenty of layers, including rain jackets, rain pants, hats, hiking boots, etc., to combat the, at times, freezing temperatures, excessive wind, and profuse rain. Doesn't this all sound so fun? Seriously though, as long as you're prepared for the elements and are a seasoned hiker and camper, this is a fabulous trip for outdoors lovers and city slickers alike. I hope you enjoyed this recap of our trip to Iceland. Until next time, happy trails!